which can all right, welcome back. Thank you uh, for joining us. It's a Atrial Fibrillation Awareness Month. From here on out, I'm going to call it AFib. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, so we have uh, here with us from Boulder Community Health today, uh, Dr. Shrini Iyengar. Uh -huh. Thank you so much for coming to talk Thanks about this issue. And I think a lot of people who don't know what AFib is might be wondering what, what do you do if you have an irregular heartbeat of any kind, well, first, first off? I would tell you, if you feel that you have palpitations or an irregular heart rate, or any type of symptoms of that nature, go to see your doctor because the way to diagnose AFib is not just so you just take your pulse but an EKG which is basically put some leads on the chest and mm -hmm. we can get a very printout of whether or not you have atrial fibrillation versus some other type of irregular heart rate. I see. So how do you know? I mean, what, what defines AFib then? Well, AFib itself is basically where the heart doesn't kind of speak to each other in normal patterns. Normally, the heart should basically be from the top to the bottom. But in AFib, the top of the heart actually doesn't really contract. Hmm. So the bottom of the heart contracts irregularly. Hence, what happens is the top part of the heart, the blood swirls and doesn't actually come out the way it should. And again, can cause symptoms like palpitations, shortness of breath, lightheadedness. These are all important symptoms to take account. Of. Definitely pay attention to those. If you are diagnosed with AFib, then what happens from that point on? Because this is this can increase the risk of some serious diseases. Definitely. In atrial fibrillation, not only the symptoms that I just mentioned, but stroke. That is the big one that we really get concerned about. Now, if the symptoms of AFib are problematic, if you're really getting these symptoms, your doctor could prescribe medications or do something called a cardioversion, where we give you some electricity. You know, mm -hmm. it sounds dramatic, but you patients usually don't feel anything to get you back to normal rhythm. But there's a second part of this that's a real big issue and the stroke issue is what we just mentioned because of that blood swirling in the top part of the heart oftentimes blood can get thick and become a clot oh. and that can result in the blood going or the clot going to the brain causing a stroke so people who have atrial fibrillation or afib often oftentimes have to take blood thinning medications the problem is a lot of people don't like taking blood thinning medications or can't because they've had bleeding issues from other reasons. So nowadays we're trying to figure out ways to treat people with AFib and ways to get them off the blood thinning medications. And I like to say that there's new technology that's available currently that's FDA approved and one of the devices is called a Watchman device. It's a device that we can actually place in the heart to take patients off the blood thinning medication and reduce the risk of stroke. Well, these are some exciting developments, so uh, be sure to check in with Boulder Community Health if you want more information on this. Uh, doctor, thank you so much for enlightening us today on that. Okay, thank you. Alisa? The only problem is